Hello and welcome to Wicklow Good News with me, Gillian Godsell. Today my guest is the very well-known Becky Harrison, who is uh, one of the owners and managers of Fishers of Newtown, Mount Kennedy. Now it's an institution that's been going for 40 years. Uh, it's a family-run institution and Becky, you've been working there pretty much all your life, I think, have you? Not quite. Not um, quite. <laughs> come, come and gone, come and come, gone. But, got experience uh, and my, came back. But no, uh, a long time. So I started out, um, I came first to work in the business in 2002. Um, so I finished uh, finished college and then, actually 2003 it was, I finished college and then worked in an international youth organization for, for a time, then came on board as marketing manager in Fishers. Um, I worked here for five years at that time um, and then was away for about five years and then came back again um, in, uh, to make sure the maths all adds up, <laughs> came back in 2012, beginning of so uh, it's, 2011. It's in your blood, is it? It's in my blood, well, something like that. So the business was actually founded 41 years ago by my parents and my, my aunt and uncle and another uncle. So it was three siblings and two of their spouses were the, the founders. And they started it as a little sideline to what the, they all had other careers um, and but they had an interest in country sports um, so they started it um, as a, a small retailer of country clothing so it was um, tweed and corduroy and wax jackets and things like that all along the, the clothing side of things um, and they started as it was literally a small very small premises here in Newtown and Kennedy um, little cottage just beside where the site is now and they they had a premises there but they, they did most of their selling at the show so at that time the county shows and the horse well show they're still the going well pre-covid I, mean, I, I would go the, to yeah, some of them were still going ahead yeah exactly. i mean I, I go to the tina healy show and the carnew and the tullow you know yeah they're, they're very yeah, popular exactly. still so so that's where where it would have started um but very quickly then it, it expanded its range so it looked at first of all uh, um, supplying some stocks for uh, women as well as men and then expanding it out into much more of a lifestyle um, branding if you like and collections that would have come through and so today so I suppose we, we sort of say we went from a selling selling country clothing out of the side of a van at the horse show to uh, it was a different type of event then that, than it is today to now we have uh, an 11,000 square foot premises here in Newtown Mount Kennedy and we're I suppose really a, it's a, a, a small we call it a boutique department store um, so our clothing is still at our core but it's very much everyday lifestyle clothing um, we still have a little bit of that heritage piece around country and outdoor is certainly still important to us but we've loads of other things on site now too so we have um uh, we have a bed and bedding shop beds with feather on site with us we have a fabulous cafe and um, food at fishers uh, we have then homewares gifts giftware uh, we have a lovely gallery which is a gallery and artist space which is all local artists and crafts people um kind of well, like that come through a, a school, the schoolhouse studio. We have a salon and we have a hair salon and we have a, um, on site, the final final piece of the jigsaw so far is a um, self-catering cottage as well. Short -term oh, wow. So there's a little bit of everything here, definitely. That is fantastic. So you're busy and are you are you involved in the buying or the managing? What's, what's kind of your role in this? So in the... my, my role is managing director. Um, I've had that role for 10 years now um, and my, my parents have stepped back from the company completely. Um, my sister is a director with me. She just works part time in the business. Is that Charlotte? Um, that's Charlotte, oh, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she's a, she's a jeweler by trade. Um, and a nurse, believe it or not. Uh, so she's a, a goldsmith, um, a psychiatric nurse and a retailer. So it's a good wow. mix, a heady mix that she has. But actually having those other external interests and viewpoints is, is invaluable. And certainly the, the creativity and the design piece from the jewellery is great to have on board here as well. And so, and how um, many staff would you have, uh, again, pre-COVID? So you... I, run, I run two businesses here. We have um, Fishers of Newtown and Kennedy, which is the, if you like, the, the department store itself, the clothing side of things, gifts, homewares. Um, we have 22 staff there. And then we also have the um, cafe, Fooded Fishers, which is uh, we 
we've another 13 staff there. So we've 20, 35 between the two businesses. That's a lot um, of people in a small it town. Is great fun. Well, we have a, a slightly less than that just at the moment. We're yeah. still building back up after COVID. Yeah. But that's, they, they were our pre-COVID numbers. So when COVID came, you had to shut your doors. We did, yeah. How so, did you feel um, about that? Well, it, it, just, it was really interesting. So we, we I suppose we saw... I was really aware of what was coming down the line and uh, we could see what was happening in other countries and we saw it. So we actually chose to close on the 13th of March, which was about a week ahead of when we were directed to, to close. Um, and we took that decision, I suppose, during that week, I remember preparing some memos for the staff to sort of have a chat with them and see look this is where we are this is what might happen this is what mightn't happen and trying to put a sort of contingency plan in place um and we met i remember drafting up a document on the tuesday night of that week um and and by thursday when we met with the staff it was completely redundant because things had changed so much in 24 hours so we met thursday night they announced that the schools would not be going back to school the following day um and we we met with the team and we said look this is this is the story uh it is it, the, we haven't been directed to close yet but everyone our customers have been directed not to come to us effectively at that stage we we saw a drop off in the customers coming over the door in the kind of two weeks the first two weeks in march um and again we could see from other countries that the directive came for lockdown if you like and the different businesses were being asked to close at different different times so we sat down and we said, look, we feel that this is happening. We feel it's the right thing to do, that we should be closing anyway. We're not essential in any way. Um, but I want to talk to you guys. Um, obviously, we don't, we don't take this decision lightly. If, if we close, you're going to be you're going to have to go on temporary layoff um we're not in a position to, to to keep you on at that stage we were having this conversation before the temporary wage subsidy scheme, subsidy scheme was in place before the pandemic unemployment payment was in place so it was before any of those things had been set up um by the government um, but we sat down and we said look let's decide so we said look the, the sort of choices are we wait until we're told to uh we close now or maybe we wait until the end of the weekend and sort of see how it goes over the weekend and kind of call it during that time. So again, we put it to the team um, and they were getting different, I suppose they all had, some had concerns, some, some didn't want to work anymore straight away. Um, some were quite happy to continue. So we decided that we would continue um, until Sunday with a sort of skeleton staff in both the throughout the premises and that we would but that we would make a call sooner if we felt we needed to um so we, i suppose what's wonderful about being a small business is that you have that agility to to make those decisions on the fly a little bit more um so we opened the following day on the friday and so it's a long-winded story jill but no 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 I, it's just because day. because we it's three months on we've forgotten what it was like you yeah. know it, and and to be you to be the person making the decisions so, no, no, so this is fascinating. Huge. Fascinating. So, the, the, so we, op we decided we'd open on Friday. Uh, we opened on Friday morning and it was actually the cafe. So the shop was kind of quiet, um, which was expected. It was fine. We had our, our skeleton crew in and um, the, we had two groups of customers came in. We a good few customers in the cafe, but two groups in particular, I suppose, helped us make our decisions. So uh, we had a group of um families or um parents and and children because the kids weren't in school so they came in there was about i think four or five kids and four or five um parents came into the cafe and we had a group of of uh six older people that came into the the cafe both groups of friends coming to to eat um or, or coffee together if you like now the directive at that stage was you shouldn't be meeting meet, meeting anyone outside of your household was what the directive was there and it was a guideline there was nothing enforced yet but that was definitely the the if you like the announcement and what we were being asked to do and um so the girls went over and just asked them to separate out a bit we had we had laid out our cafe so that there was space between the tables so that people could do it and we had asked people to keep in smaller groups excuse me <coughs> um for that time so we had asked them to do that and these two groups so um the group with the children 
were all piled on top of each other. And when we'd ask them to separate out, they were sort of a little bit incredulous that we would ask them. And the, the other group of people laughed at us. We, they wanted to push two tables together and we had said, look, I'm afraid you can't. We have to implement social distancing here. And they were- And this really word, of course, was new. Social distancing was, was only a look, new it was thing. Brand new, it yeah. was brand new for everyone. Um, and, but the reaction we got, and, and when we said, look, this is the new rules, we have to implement this. And we were, the, the staff were given just an incredible amount of resistance to it. And they just said, look, we're putting ourselves on the front line. Anyone can walk through the door um, that isn't as careful as we are. And that's not fair, if you like. So they said, look, I'm just not comfortable putting myself at risk or the other customers at risk for, with someone that maybe isn't going to be as sensible as someone else. Um, so we decided to close that, that evening. So we closed on the Friday evening. Um, and that was that was the decision made, if you like. And it's funny because I felt I, I felt very good about the decision because it was a um, it, you know it was a it was the right thing to do. Um, it was a slightly bold move because we we were ahead of other people doing it, and obviously now that seems like a brilliant idea. Um, but at the time, it, you know, you're not so sure. Um, and are you overreacting? And are you know all of those things go go through your head? So obviously, in hindsight, it proved to be the correct thing to do, and I'm very grateful that it was. Um, and um, and we got we got incredible. We obviously we have a very strong customer loyalty program, and we have a lot of customers, loyal customers, and we communicate with them regularly. So we had it, we had got in touch with them by text and email just to say to them what was happening, that we will be closing until we were told it was safe to reopen. Um, and, you know, hopefully they understood and whatever else. And the, the feedback from our customers was actually extraordinary, that they were so supportive of us doing that. They were really, really amazing. And they said, look, absolutely the right thing to do. You know, brave decision that we support you and thank you for looking after us and your team and all of that. So it was a great feel good if you like from that mm. from that perspective but yeah I, I'm and it is tough of, because you're although it mean again we're three months down four months down so these things are so obvious in hindsight but it's kind of scary because you've got staff to look after and salaries and as, as you said the pandemic wasn't in yet so no, it's a it layoff in. situation and it's yeah. like oh my god i'm responsible for these people and are you also responsible for your customers and oh there's so many things going on so many things plates right, in the air a huge amount of responsibility exactly um, and yeah as i said at that time it was you were going on to job seekers 203 euro not a 350 wasn't in the equation at all and it wasn't for some time actually afterwards um so so it was a big it was a big commitment for for my teams to be okay with that as well but actually you know it was really them that were driving you know they drove that we did it sooner rather than later which which was great from my point of view obviously that i'm not putting anyone too much out but it's a big deal it was a big deal you know for them as well um so and also we have as i said there are several other businesses on site here so it wasn't just me closing my business it was me closing other people's businesses as well and saying you know yeah. we're not going to be open so you your customers can't come in to us you know, into this space either. All the um, little ripples you don't think about. Exactly, I know you do think about, but exactly, the ripples and exactly. ripples. Whoa. Yeah. So, so, you, um, so yeah. sorry. No, go ahead. And I was saying, so you made the right decision. Very tough. You were a bit ahead of the curve in that regard. Um, and now the good news is three, four months later, you opened, you've opened this week. So tell me though, it's not as simple um, as, <laughs> as just opening the shop again. Tell me, because I was looking at some of the stuff. There is so much to think about. Tell me some of the things you have to do to make it safe for your staff and your customers well there's there, it, there's huge responsibility on business owners um on reopening and the, there's a the government have been very supportive to to a point um in terms of obviously in terms of financial support but also in terms of information and and how to do things but they've all, but a lot of the guidelines are actually quite vague um they have a the return to work booklet is huge it's you know um I think it's well there's several of them i know one is 28 pages and another one was about 40 pages of these protocols on how to come return to work safely and then obviously every industry has specific requirements that are different um so for us we have the public coming in every you know every day and we have different people coming in all the time um and so we we obviously 
poured over all of the, the guidelines. But a lot of it we had to, if you like, come up with our own solutions. It doesn't give you solutions. It says sort of, have you thought about this? And do you have a procedure for this? Not what the procedure is or what that should look like. Um, so I suppose we, we, with the two businesses, there kind of some, there's some overlaps, but they're sort of different. So I suppose with the shop, first of all, um, so for us, I suppose, again, one of our real big advantages is we're, we're based in Newton Man Kennedy. It's a small town in County Wicklow. Um, it doesn't have, which might have been a big negative up to this point, but it doesn't have, you know, hundreds of thousands of people passing the door. Every it's not done drum. It's not Dundrum, it's not Grafton Street. Um, so for that reason, we, we have never had massive footfall through the store, um, which means that thankfully, we're not trying to manage massive footfall now. Um, it also has proven that, again, for our customers that know us, they know when they come down to us, it's actually quite an, a pleasant experience anyway that there's not crowds of people here you're going to be looked after and it's not you know it's not really crowded you're not on top of anyone else so that has remained the same um now if you like having said that we do have a, a limit on the number of people that can come into the store we do have a queuing system socially distant queuing system outside the front um should should that be needed it actually hasn't been needed yet we had one day that it was nearly needed but wasn't quite um so that's that's reassuring so that i suppose for the customer journey on arrival that's that if you like that's the first part that there is a queuing system we've also changed our layout in the store so we've reduced our footprint um, now we did that initially because smaller shops were allowed open in the guy in the roadmap before larger shops. And we're, we're quite lucky in that we have several different rooms within our space. So we could just close off several of the rooms and to then come into the size, if you like, that was allowed. Um, we spent about a week or 10 days preparing that. And two days before we were due to open, the government changed their minds and said any size shop could open. Now, we, had de we have decided to keep that as a permanent fixture. Had I not made that decision anyway, I would have been really annoyed <laughs> um, for putting in this incredible amount of work and it was all basically wasted. Um, so I can imagine there were probably quite a lot of annoyed people at that stage. But look, they, they got over it because it meant we could open and away we go. Um, but anyway, so on arrival, so our layout has changed. So there's now a, a it's a one-way system through the shop. So you can come in one door and go out the other. And we felt that was really important for our store because outside of our main entrance, it's quite a narrow pathway. Yes, um, I know. Yeah. Between the side of the building and the wall. Um, so we just felt people passing within that space wasn't appropriate. Even though it's outside and whatever else, we just felt it wasn't the right thing to do. Um, so they're coming in one side and then going out the other side so that you don't have that uh, narrow passing, um, if you like. So then you come in the door and we have obviously signs everywhere reminding everyone of, of all of the, um, the responsible etiquette in terms of hand washing, um, sneezing, coughing, all of that side of things. Um, and we have a little then a sort of sanitization station on arrival. So we have... Um, we have sanitizer there. Again, we, we're, we had gloves for a while, but actually we've removed those now because we feel the clean hands is better than gloved hands and it keeps people more aware of what they're touching and how they're doing it. Um, and then we also have uh, masks available for customers. So we've created, we've, um, we've commissioned our own masks. I should have had one here to show. I don't know, I'll see if I can grab one in a moment. Um, but we've created our own masks to, to give out to our customers. So they're reusable masks. Customers can can buy them or they can just borrow them for the duration of their stay with us. And then we fully disinfect and launder them um, after after they've been used. So both of those things are available on, on entry into the store. I've been hearing that your 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 masks are very comfortable. <laughs> very comfortable. That's the biggest thing, trying to get a comfortable mask, because some of them they don't stretch far enough or they fall down or their your ears get stuck out hugely. Okay. Oh. They're shaped ones and they actually are quite comfortable. I do have one just off screen, so I might get, grab one in a second. But, yeah. um, they are they are nice. They are nice. It's a double layer, so there's a cotton next to your next to your face, which is lovely as well for, for feeling. Um, but the other thing that we're using actually in store, and again, I don't think I have one here, wasn't very prepared, Julian. Mm -hmm. And we're using the visors in store, the staff are, and that's been fantastic because it for, if you're wearing you can't wear a mask all day and they're you know they say that you should only wear them for an hour or so at a time and if you're taking you can't take them on and off and things like that and you need to if you're eating or looking after a customer or whatever it is 
Um, so we use the visors, which we got um, from, it's a local company here that makes them, Calf Dynamics down in Kilku. Um, so again, a nice uh, supporting Irish, and we're actually selling them for them in the store as well. So they've been brilliant for us to use as, as employees in the, in the business and staff here. Um, and then we've got the, the Perspex screens up at the tills, um, all of that side of it as well. Um, and then the, I suppose the, the other unusual, not unusual really, but one of the other features that we we took the decision to try to allow our changing rooms to remain open. And that's um, unusual, isn't it? Most shops it have closed most people, them. Most yeah. people haven't. I suppose um, if they're bigger shops, you need to have that boutique feel to do that, to be managing your customers, don't you? I think you do. So for us, to enable us to do that safely, we had to, again, implement more procedures. So um, we have, in our ladies' department, we have we have three change rooms. So what we've done is we've opened two of them. They're quite big, spacious change rooms. There are big partitions between them. So there's no cross-contamination, if you like, um, risk of that but what we've done is we've closed the the middle changing room for a customer's use and the two outer ones are being used and then the middle one we're using as a kind of quarantine station for the clothes that have been tried on and not purchased um so we what we do is we put those clothes on into the quarantine area they stay there until the following day so it's it's a sort of a about a 15 hour plus um, quarantine period. And then we steam those the following morning. So we've steamers, handheld steamers that um, are up at about 200 degrees. So they will kill off anything that's, that's left, which it won't be at that, after that amount of time anyway, but sort of as a double, a doubly, doubly double sure. check, yeah. um, And then they can go back into stock at that stage. And then the fitting rooms themselves are cleaned out after each, each use um, as well. So yeah, there's a little bit of extra work involved in that but i have to say we've been really surprised our customers really want that um they are they're delighted to be able to try on again and i think um for us reopening and um i don't know if i was saying this to you before Julie, but we we did a survey for our customers before we reopened and um we've a really we've a fantastic loyal customer base um and we have a loyalty program so we sent a survey out to our to our loyalty database and then to our through the social through social media as well we actually had over a thousand responses to our survey which we just thought i thought we'd get on a good day we'd get maybe 200 or three figures you know but we couldn't believe it we had over a thousand responses and what was really interesting we, we we sent it out because we wanted to know did our customers feel safe about coming back to shop at all um, we were discussing earlier there's so many people who are compromised or who can't or who just don't want to and are not comfortable coming back so we wanted to know when people might feel that they were comfortable to come back and also then how would they like to shop when they came back so we looked at do you want to just come back normally and kind of browse the shop and and get, keep going or do you want shopping by appointment do you want a virtual stylist appointment do you just want to shop online all of those different ideas or do you want you know kind of like you see on tv with the kind of wedding dresses a little a, a sort of a, a, a booth or an appointment little room just for you and we can have several of those set up and um, and i suppose a lot of the talk during lockdown before retail reopened before non-essential retail reopened was around these different ways of shopping and how and how retail has changed it's you know it's going to be much more transactional going forward and um, so we need to gear up in that way. But what was extraordinary from the survey and has absolutely borne out now that we're open again is that people absolutely want the experience of shopping still. They want to come in and browse. They want to feel the, the quality of the, the clothes that they're buying. Um, and, um, and actually people didn't want to. So we had 80, 85% of our customers wanted to shop and browse in That's terms normal. Of survey, and certainly in terms of what's come in we've had one customer has booked a private shopping appointment and um, in the in the months that we've been open now and um, everyone else has just wanted to shop normally um, and then in terms of the survey we'd again 82 percent of our customers wanted to come back either as soon as possible or during during the summer um, so that gave us incredible reassurance coming back to open and obviously they wanted they were also amazing the, the survey was brilliant because there were loads of customers with suggestions of what we should do and what oh, they wow. feel comfortable with so yeah. some of it a, a lot of it we had planned to do anyway but there were some fantastic ideas in there that we hadn't necessarily thought of so that was that was really useful 
So from the shop point of view, that's kind of where we where we were, and and we found that business has been fine since we've come back. And um, we really just didn't know what to expect. We had no idea what the demand was going to be, and so anything was going to be good, <laughs> if you like. Um, so we we had. We had traded online during the lockdown, um, but our online sales were about 5% of our what our sales would normally have been in, in April and May. Um, so, you know... It's such a relief to, then to open the doors. I mean, it's great the 5% pays a few bills, maybe, you know, the ESB or something, you know. Exactly. But, wow. but exactly that. That's, yeah. cool. that's um, exciting. So, yeah. so for the summer, do, do you, I mean, do you see any changes or, or are you going to, I suppose it's week by week it changes, I suppose, is it? So it's... That's really, that really, really is the case. It's just taking every week as it comes and seeing what happens, what the, how the customers are reacting. And, and again, when we reopened, it was amazing to see so many customers that had not been out anywhere um, for three months and they were coming and they, you know, a lot of them were apprehensive and we, you know, it was our job to, to reassure them and to make sure that they felt safe where, where coming to us. And certainly the feedback we've got has been, has been, has been fantastic. Um, but it's, you know, I remember discussing at the start just before we opened and we were sort of saying, oh, sure, look, everyone knows. They've all been to the supermarket. They know the drill. And we were like, well, actually, they, they don't because so many people haven't been to the supermarket. Yeah. Um, that they have a neighbor going for them or a one person from the household goes, everyone else doesn't. So, and certainly that's been, again, come out that so many people haven't and they're experiencing it for the first time and what's you know what is going on here well, i have to say going. it's testament to your shop because i mean your shop and your cafe is beautiful and it's it the layout is gorgeous you know it's, it's a beautiful environment so i think if you were i don't know another shop you mightn't have quite so many people coming back or, <laughs> <laughs> or people quite so happy to come and see you but it, it's it's very encouraging and it's lovely oh, because yeah. like that's two generations and you're all your hard work in a business and it's 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 wonderful to hear that it's 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 getting back up again and it's thriving because obviously there are so many businesses that won't open again for different reasons. Do you know what there, there are Gillian and I think that we, we sort of joke here at Fishers that it's a constant evolution and it is and any business is a constant evolution really. Um, I was on a, a, a webinar the other day I was uh, one of the panelists and that, that was one of the big things is that it was sort of like what what are entrepreneurs doing or how are things and I say well look as business owners whether we're selling clothes or you know creating podcasts or selling widgets it's fundamentally we're problem solvers and i think that's why there has been just such incredible innovation and ingenuity within the small businesses of ireland and what they've done with some guidelines but also some very vague guidelines yeah. they've had yeah. to be creative and come up with things themselves and whether that's completely pivoting a business to do something completely different or just tweaking it those that that little bit to make it work in this new world that we live in um, i think that the the resilience that a lot of business owners have show has shown is, have been just extraordinary um, and there are going to be businesses that close but yeah. a lot of those people you know are assessing it and they're going okay well look this isn't i can't continue on this basis but they will bounce back as well and i think there's something is, else you know, come up. but i, I think also place. um you're absolutely right you, you you a lot of hard work was into changing all the fabric of your your building and the shop and how it works and whatever and then and this is also testament to the good job that you do and the amazing loyalty of the customers and people supporting and i think that's a big thing that i've, I've heard through talking to people in the last three months people want to support local they really do and they see the hard work and you know if, if you're, you know can i buy it in fishers yeah well let me go and see if i can buy it in fishers or yeah. you know buy the scones or the cakes or the dresses or whatever so I, I it's a combination of the two it's and it's very powerful no it is and i have to say again it's been wonderful to see that shop local message coming across again and again through through the media and social media and and uh, you know people just talking about it and people really understanding how important it is actually because if you know if we close and and in fairness again to to the government that i think that there's lots more that they could do but uh, for us the temporary wage subsidy scheme where our our teams are on it i'm not not afraid to say it i'm on it <laughs> um, but it is like that meant we could open again yeah. Um, otherwise, we're starting into this period with a humongous amount of debt, particularly, I suppose, in retail. We had all of our stock delivered 
just before we closed um, with more due to be delivered in fairness while we were closed but the, and all, or no opportunity to sell that or very very tiny opportunity to sell that so we started this with a huge big debt not just um the you know the the utilities and uh, rent or mortgage or whatever it is but also this for all this product that we had um and so you know it is a matter of okay well actually the, the numbers don't match up here the cash flow and again with an unknown demand you're trying to plan you're trying to work that out so i will i will say that that has been absolutely instrumental in terms of our opening up again and that combined with the fantastic um reassurance we got from conducting that survey was it was why we said look we have to at least try this if you like and and i'm very glad obviously we did our customers are very glad we did but again i think that that shop local piece as, as, as again is really really important and there's a whole campaign at the moment where we're supporting as well just championing green which again is that shop local but it's or buy irish piece yeah. and it's it really really is so important and we try to do that in store we we try and support as many irish brands as we can we're not all irish but we have a good portion of them um and both in the cafe as well obviously with all our local produce we're, we're highlighting that to even more local than just irish so um it's brilliant nice to do that too yeah, yeah well i'm i'm thrilled it's a lovely story hard work a lot of hard work and a lot of hard work going to the future but great support um, locally with your staff, with your customers, your suppliers, and a great, again, it, it com comes down to a great service and products that you're offering, Becky. So um, I, I think the future is bright at Fisher's. <laughs> Thank you so much. Keep Eve. our fingers I crossed. We didn't even get to chat about the cafe and what we're doing there. <laughs> next time, next time. <laughs> exactly. Thank you so Plenty much for your time. Yeah, no, Thanks we'll come so back much, again. Julian. Thank you so much. It's Becky Harrison, who is the CEO of Fishers of Newtown Mount Kennedy. That's all for this show with me, Gillian Gotzel. Uh, producing Marlena Murphy and on sound is Gavin Dowd. And until next time, be good, be safe, and keep on helping others. Thank you. Thank you.